that I found it very difficult to um, reward uh, speed, differential speed in the dog, and have them understand that concept. So okay. let's talk about like fast sits, right? So out of motion exercises and shits, and we're always working on speeding up the sits, right? And if your dog sits decently versus sits really fast, and you reward the really fast one but not the decent one, right? right? The dog doesn't know the difference, in my opinion. The dog doesn't know that they sat a little faster that time. That's why they got rewarded. They sat a little faster because they were in the right state of mind ahead of time. They were either primed to do that one or they were in the right motivational state and concentrating, so they did it. But to them, they're sitting, right? How did you determine that? Well, just because I, we've, I've messed so much with it, and I just don't yeah. think they get the difference. Like, so now, if a dog but sat like this, theory. like totally out of it, and you didn't reward that, they might. But like, you get a dog that sits medium fast, a dog that sits really fast, and you're going to try to reward only the really fast ones, and they're going to know the difference. Doesn't happen. If it gets faster, in my opinion, it's because they were expecting it, and you had them in a better drive state. That's why they sat faster, right? And there's a foundational component to teaching a quick sit when they're learning to sit and that kind of thing. But I think it's hard. It's the same thing in retrieve, right? I try to reward dogs at, at the right time when they're coming back a little faster yeah. this time and say, I'll reward that one because that was a fast one. But the one before was good but not as fast. And do they know the difference? I don't think they do. I really don't think you can qualitatively get them to understand that. They understand the behavior. They understand what behavior gets them a reward. But the idea that they do one a little bit better than the other one, and that's why they got the reward, or got a bigger reward because that one was a little better, I don't think so. And speed is almost always a function of getting the dog mo drive state and having him know what he's supposed to do so he's not surprised, right? So a lot of slow ones are like, when we teach out of motion exercises, we deliberately don't pattern them because we want the dog to listen to us. Right. But that means you can surprise the dog, right? So he's like, oh, I thought you were gonna say sit and you said down, and he goes, oh, 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 and he may even do it right, but he was had to switch gears in his head. So it won't be as fast as if he was expecting you to say down. It's the same thing if I do it around 20 paces or whatever, and then I'm doing a really long healing pattern, right. my dog gets into healing mode, and I'm now at 100 paces, and I happen to be cruising along, and I say sit, he might go, what? <laughs> uh, and he may sit. But he might go like, I, you never say sit when we're, I was healing, right? I'm in that mode. So they have to kind of expect it if you want it to be really fast to some degree. And you have to have them in the right emotional state, right? So that's why so the people pattern that so much to make speed. So the dog knows what's coming and boom, they're ready for it when it comes. And then they can physically do it. People cue the dog so they know what's coming, right? So that's what we do in Mahantia, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like cheating. dog training, right? So, yeah, so like, oh, like people, there, people have little, very them. subtle cues that they give yeah. the dog to which ones they're going to do, right? Yeah. And so the dogs know, and they don't make a mistake, right? And it, you hit a spot, <laughs> and you're going to say, like, hey. And, I'm like, I can make a very out. reliable dog that will listen, and I can surprise him, and he'll stu still do it right. But is he going to do it as fast as the no. patterned dog? No way, no. right? There's no way. There's Not some possible. processing thing, right? And, there's, and it's different with different dogs. So some do also, speed is also a, f a function of the brain-body connection, right? And we ask some dogs to be faster than they're capable of being a lot, right? Like somebody will say, I want my dog to sit faster. I'm like, your dog can't sit faster, right? His brain to his, down his spinal cord to his butt does not go that fast. Yeah. <laughs> Just like people, right? Like there's some people that can do it and some that can't, right? And we put all kinds of crazy pressure on dogs to try to do something that sometimes they're not physically capable of doing which is yep. patently unfair. And that's a judgment call, but it's, it's a difficult one. Yeah. Experience is wonderful. And one of the places that I saw it really dramatically is when I first started, when I first started teaching motion exercises, um, I'd go and do a motion exercise, and the dog would do it a certain thing. If I, I with Pi, I used to do, when I first started teaching him again, because I hadn't really taught them out of motion, I'd basically taught positions, and I'd taught game stuff, and I'd messed around with different things, so he knew the words really well. Right. And, I could stand on one foot and hop up and down, and he would do them, right? So he got the idea. So when I went into motion, he just did them, right, more or less. Like right. he had already had enough different things, so he just did them. But sometimes he wouldn't do them as fast, and other times he would. And so I would do something. I'd stand here, and I'd say down, and I'd down him. And then I'd say heel, and I'd do a down out of motion. He would smoke it. I would say, I'm here, I'd say sit, and then I'd heal him, and I'd do a sit out of motion. He'd smoke it, right? Each time, like if I primed him beforehand, bam, much faster, right? And he'd do the other ones, but they were slightly slower. 
And so I'm saying, like, and I could not reward the slightly slower ones or reward them, and it didn't make any difference. But if he knew what was coming and he was in the right drive state, bang, right? And I think that's, that, that I see that a lot. Like, if the dog's in the right place, then they'll do it. If they're capable of doing it, they'll do it that way. If they're not, then there's a processing time that has to happen. They have to hear it, go, oh, I was expecting you to say this, change their mind, make their body do it. And, and some dogs, uh, I think most dogs can't, right? And, it's, and so in sendaways and recalls and things like that, it's the same. Like if the dog's coming really fast and I mark that, did it understand that because they accelerated a little bit there, that's why what they got rewarded for? And I'm not so sure. <laughs> I'm not so sure they do, right? I think more like if, I have the, if I've taught them to come and they've gotten lots of rewards for it and I've increased yeah. the drive state and now they're in a good spot, they come fast, right? And I can't sort of go like, oh, you're running at 80%. Oh, look, you went up to 85, mark that. Now you're going to run at 85. I think that's hard. They don't get that. It's a little like jackpotting the idea, the same thing, right? I think the reason that it works if it works is because you just generally increase overall motivation. So once the dog got a great big reward, now the dog's like, ah, I like this, right? <laughs> and so they're much more likely to do it better the next time. But I don't think they understood, like, wow, I did it a little better that time, so he gave me a whole fistful of food, versus he's giving me one piece when I do it not quite that good. I don't think well, they get that.